Hi, my name's Bert Hart from Equip2 Screening Crushing. Here today we're showcasing the new R3H and just going over a few things that uh, Keystrack have improved on this plant from the previous model being the standard R3. One big thing I really want to point out is the great, how great it is to work with a company that really likes to listen to their clients and listen to feedback um, coming from the, you might say, the floor to the design office. So what we've gone through today is just the improvements that um, a lot of users have, have said was a bit of an issue with the last model and how we've increased um, the design, improved the design in this model here. So you may see that the design of the plant or the look of the plant has changed from the previous model. Um, this is not, there's a lot more that's underlying that. Um, one thing I will say is the base of the plant is very, very much the same. So the impact unit, that was fantastic on the last part, last machine, so we'll, they'll keep that the same. Um, the hopper design and the main design of the screen box, but these are just a few little things that's made a lot easier. The biggest part that I find is a great improvement is access to everything around the engine, doing all your da daily checks. And the whole point there is just making it easier for the guys on the floor, therefore increasing your profit per ton. So in this section here, this is where Airflinks run on the plant. So starting your plant up, doing all your controls with a PLC, and then also your hydraulic controls. So your hydraulic controls are all in one area now, therefore just making it a lot safer for everyone around. So the remote for the Keystrack is a, this one here is a 10 function remote. So we can start the plant from here on the auto start. We can track the plant while it's in operation and also in an application of such as um, concrete, we can lift the lid of the crusher to let any long bits in there or if we have a, a, an unlikely event of a jam up. And also lift your magnet up and down. And the great feature of that is everyone, um, when you get a bird's nest in front of that magnet, um, that can stall your whole conveyor belt. So all you need to do with the operator on the excavator, just presses that button, lifts that magnet up, frees the material out, and then it carries on crushing. The other thing we can do on here is increase or decrease the feeder speeds. So if we can get more out of the plant, we don't need to hop down from our excavator onto the PLC, do the changes, and then back up again. So that just minimizes any event of a safety incident. So this is just showing the way they've designed the, the lid inspection lid at the rear. So everything's hinged now rather than lifting a lid off. You get in there, do your inspections, check your wear plates, and maybe your, your belt conditions. So this is our little toolbox. Getting everything you need. So we've got in here is our master key. This is our safety system for getting into the crushing chamber. So you actually have to have that master key out, plug into A, and then you now can take your, your secondary key out being the B. So now that I've got my key, I can now Free our safety lock. So that now allows us to unlock the locking mechanism to be able to do our inspections. So while this key's in here, there's no way that the engine could be running or the road to start. So making it completely um, fail safe. So now that we can see inside the door, this is where we do our inspections. We can inspect our apron plates and also our blow bar. So you can, that's where you do your measurements of your settings for your top and bottom apron. So Keystrack's still running that great design of the, I'd say the square design of the rotor and therefore giving it optimized um, wear properties and also pressure throughput. So typically on these machines, we're seeing about on 65, get 65, around about um, 200 ton an hour up to 250 ton an hour. So as you see here, the fans are actually directly mounted on the heavy duty door here, and therefore giving us full access to the radiators. So for the likes of the cleaning and servicing, um, it's 
So in through here we can get to our filters, our electrical lockout, hydraulic taps, and great improvement is the hydraulic tanks a lot smaller than the other units, and that's because the way they've optimized the hydraulic system. So once this door is open, we can now get to the engine, check our oils, um, hydraulic filters are nice and accessible, and then our auto loop system, our water, and the hydraulic tank. So the tank's actually quite a lot smaller than the past unit. So they're all about optimizing the surfacing, less cost in the, in the surfacing. And they've been able to do this through the way they've designed the hydraulic system in this piece of car. So now we've gone into this side of the plant, we can get access to our air cleaner, our batteries, and then the turbo clutch. So as you see through here, your belts are driven out through the side and our gearbox just in behind. So for engaging our clutch is nice and easy and accessible. And then through the back here is our fuel tank. So keeping that weight um, fairly low and hidden. So also in the other plant, it was real difficult to get to your drive system on your, your pulleys, etc. So this is now a lot more easier to access. So we're now sitting up here in the feed hopper. So on the sidewalls, we've got hard ox lined as standard, even though our primary material is still made of Domex steel, which is another brand of hard ox. And as everyone knows, the pre-screen in front of the impact is very, very important to try and reduce the amount of fines that's going into the impactor. So we've got it designed here, so it's got um, bolted down face down, so we can pull this off and replace it with different types of media. As you see, it's still running the asymmetric system, which means that a piece of concrete, if it's flowing along the hopper, it'll hit the side first, turn it around, and then feed it in through the chamber. So the other piece about these, the great thing about the system that we're running on the R3H is that it's got the two-piece feeder, so it means that side will stay static, and then the feeder's moving underneath that. So what that does, that segregates material to flow evenly into the crushing chamber. So with the other system, which is one piece, the whole wall shake and it moves as a bulk into the hopper, meaning there's a lot of stopping and starting and then therefore that affects your end result of your spec material. So now we're inside the crushing chamber. So with the crusher locked out, and also the tilting housing with its safety lock-in. So it gives us nice wide opening to work in and maintain the piece of plant. So just gonna talk a little bit about the impact unit itself, the rotor, being the most critical part of the, the machine. Um, therefore, Keystrack beat these up. Uh, this here weighs about 3.2 tons. So when you get that spinning, you got that velocity. The other important part is the shape of the rotor. So rather than having the rounded shaped rotors, Keystrack have gone for more of a square shaped. What this does is gives you more entry in front of the blow bar. So as you see here, as the material is coming in, it's getting a, a chance to get smacked in front of the bar. What this gives us is um, a lot better wear, gives us better shape index, and also throughput of the material. And saying that, um, when you wear your bars down, you have about 20 mil left at the back, and you're still getting a good hit on the face of it and you're not doing any damage to your bow bar, to your rotor itself. So there's no need to do any hard facing or those kind of activities on these rotors. So in here is our inlet with our safety chains and your rubbers. Um, very important to keep those um, maintained so you're not getting any throwback outside the inlet. But as you see here, we call these diverter blocks. And what that does is that brings material more to the center of the rotor and minimizes your wear, your blow bars curling off at the sides. The other awesome feature that I've added on this model is a replaceable bar through the inlet. So in the past it just came to a peak and then you had just wear plates that you had to replace and it was always the tip that wore out. Now the, he's got a bar that's also reversible that just slides out of the side of the chamber. 
So here we're talking about the aprons, these are upper apron and then the lower apron. So these are all interchangeable. So depending on what kind of application you're in, a lot of time we're running a high chrome plate at the bottom, so that gives a lot more wearability than at the top we run the manganese. So at the top you're getting a lot more impact, at the bottom's more abrasion wear. At the blow here we've got our belt saving plate, so that lifts out and can be interchanged with the milling beam. So milling beam is used in applications where we need a bit better shape index or we want to break down um, likes of glass or asphalt and the pit. That's all now adjusted at the back. So access to adjusting that apron, that milling third apron is a lot, lot simpler. So this feature here, we've actually lowered the screen box down to maintenance position. And um, this is a great feature with the key tracks. Everything's nice and accessible, making it safe and easy to change the screening media or to do your, your daily checks. But this is an improvement on the past model, the R3, the standard um, the screen box here is an extra 40% larger than the past model. So just allowing that extra production to go through the piece of plant. Another thing Keystrack has done to make things even easier is fitting lifetime bearing tail pulleys on their conveyors. So that's also on the head, head drums and the tail drums. What this minimizes is um, grease points, um, minimizes greasing and anything that could um, fail on the plant. So on the key track, on the main belt, to do a belt change on these machines, we drop the whole screen box off and it's fitted with quick couplers. So to take that off, it takes uh, about 25 minutes to drop the screen off, back the crusher off the screen. Then that leaves this main conveyor alone. And to drop that off, we've got a couple of pins at the back and these locking tabs at the top. So once that's free, we can lower the whole conveyor to the floor, drop it on the ground, and then once again back the crusher off the conveyor, leaving one conveyor on the ground, so it's a lot easier to work on, do vulcanizing or fold the conveyor up, and then put a loop belt on, which we supply here at a foot two. So overall, all those features that we've been talking about, everyone adds up, and it's all about minimizing your cost and improving your profit per tonne. So the reason I see these being so successful in New Zealand is transportation and um, excellent throughput and ease of use. I get a lot of challenges a lot of time, people saying why have they got the engine based underneath the hopper? And the reason for that is to be able to keep everything compact, but also to have that easy to be able to maintain has been a critical point. So it is free of dust, they've got an excellent sealing system in the feeder so that you're not getting a lot of spillage inside to your engine bay. So we actually get a lot of feedback from our clients that they're actually out producing the machines that are in the 50 tonne range. So this, to be weighing in at 30 tonne, is actually quite a, quite a feat. But I really put that down to weigh just the features of the, the rotor design and having the, the mass inside the rotor, the things that are important, Keystrack's really focused on. And to get that weight down to 30 tonne, it's been incredible through um, design engineers and the materials that's being used. So types of steel, so the framework's made out of domic steel and they have used a bit of um, fiberglass around the plant and that's in the areas where nothing can be hit or obstructed from stones.